Tonight, we're back in the land of plenty where supersized portions have led to a spiraling obesity crisis. F -A -T, fat. And Dr. Christian's on a mission to stop us from eating ourselves into an early grave. My days are over. In the feeding clinic, it's supersized Joe. It's quite hard to tell somebody I've only just met. Mm. Things like that, and when I can't even tell my family. Versus super skinny Emma. I probably wouldn't feed this to my dog. And we meet a former anorexic whose eating disorder brought her close to death. Liver failed, you know, my heart has failed, and I had to have dialysis because my kidneys failed. After all, it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. In 2020, it's predicted that a third of adults in the UK will be obese. In America, they're already there. All this series, I'll be reporting on America's worsening obesity crisis from Evansville, Indiana, America's fattest city, to try to stop us in the UK from heading in the same direction. But stateside, it's not just the waistlines that have supersized. It's estimated that treating obesity and its related conditions is costing up to $147 billion a year. This is a serious problem. We are going to see the first generation that is not going to live as long as their parents lived. On the front line of the battle against obesity here in Evansville is the Deaconess Hospital, where, just like in the population, over a third of the patients here are obese. Losing weight is essential to avoid serious illness or even death, and increasing numbers are taking drastic action. One of my specialties is bariatric surgery, weight loss surgery, and this morning we are going to be doing a gastric bypass on a gentleman. Lloyd is a 42-year-old grandfather who's already lost three stone naturally. Why are you having the surgery and not continuing with the weight loss? Time, mainly. I've got high blood pressure. I need the help. Yeah. That's why I'm doing the surgery. I don't, I don't feel like I can do it by myself. Do you see this surgery as a, as a last chance? It's just a tool. If you don't follow with the, with the diet plans and the exercise plans, yeah, the surgery is going to be useless. It's not going to help. Gastric bypass is both costly and complex, costing upwards of £11,000 in the States and 15000 in the UK, where there's also a one in five risk of complication. This operation is non-reversible. The small intestine is connected to a new reduced-sized stomach, which limits the way food is absorbed. But surgery is no magic cure. A US study found that within 10 years of the operation, 34% of those whose initial BMI was over 50 regained all or most of their weight. Two gruelling hours later, and Lloyd's surgery is a success. I'm in a lot of pain, but, you know, that's to be expected. Almost all my patients say that their life is markedly improved. He will feel better, uh, minimize, if not get rid of, most of his medications that he's taking at this point, and go about living a normal life. I'm glad I've done it. I'm looking forward to being able to play with the grandbaby. That's, that's my whole point in going through all this. And that kid better appreciate it, because this is a lot of crap to go through. <laughs> In just 10 years, the UK has seen bariatric surgery procedures rise from 261 to 8,087. That's a 3,000% increase. One unwanted side effect of rapid weight loss is excess skin. Hi. So, Debbie, can I just ask you quickly, what have you come here for? I've lost a lot of weight, like over 100 pounds over the last couple of years, so I have like some extra skin on my stomach area. And you'd like that tidying up, mm -hmm. as it were? Yeah. Can you stand up for me for a second, Debbie? Perfect. Um, so what we'd actually do is make her incision go up underneath the skin, raise the skin up like this. At that point, then we evaluate the muscles, which are normally, um, after someone has gained quite a bit of weight, quite distended. So we will corset those muscles up with a, with a suture that literally pulls them in like an internal girdle. So once we've done that, this skin it was way up here. It's going to be moving all the way down here. She's probably going to have 12 to 13 inches of skin removed during the surgery. Wow. 
Debbie had to fork out $10,000 for this operation. For her, it was worth it. But for those who can't afford cosmetic surgery, surplus skin causes irritation, hygiene problems, pain and infection, to say nothing of low self-esteem. Back home, Dr. Christian wants to make sure that we in the UK don't follow in America's fat footsteps or go too far the other way. So he's brought together eight super sizes and eight super skinnies. First, it's shock treatment, facing their opposites before they go into the feeding clinic to tackle their destructive diets. OK, Joe, come on in. And you're going to be paired up with Emma. And you? You really, really are thin. <laughs> it was quite scary. She's so skinny, it's not healthy. It shocked me a lot seeing Joe. She's a very, very big girl. Emma survives on childlike portions, whereas Jo snacks on treats bought for her kids on top of her already mammoth meals. When it comes to food, these two have got a lot to learn. Jo Palmer from Staffordshire has her hands full looking after her three boys. Shrimp burgers. But it's not just her hands. Her mouth is constantly full as well. Cheesecake, pork pie, chips, crisps, cake, pizzas, donuts, ice cream, kebabs. My love of food has, has been a big part of my life. It's my world. It's like my best friend but my worst enemy all at the same time. And they say, keep your enemies close. <laughs> and that's why at 27 years old, 5 foot 8 Joe is 24 stone, 3 pounds. I blame myself. It's only me that's put food in my mouth. Nobody else has forced it down me. Convenience is Joe's motto. Two ham sandwiches, pork pie, sausage roll and crisps is the lunch du jour from Monday to Friday. I've always been chunky, and I've just, as I've grown up, I've just got... Bigger and bigger, it disgusts me. I love Jo for the way she is, so it's never particularly bothered me. It is a, a confidence thing, so it would be nice to see her lose some weight. Jo loves food, but she hates what it's done to her. I see a beach whale, I feel awful, I look awful, and I feel almost physically sick sometimes, looking at myself. My favourite bit of my body would probably be my eyes. I've got quite smiley eyes, and one day the rest of them might smile with it. Hello, can I have a nice delicious Two please. I had a big thing when I was pregnant that I couldn't stomach cooking food, and it all stems from that, and I've just got lazy now. I don't want my children picking up on my bad habits. I don't want the worry and the scares that come along with being fat. I want to be healthy for my children. I want to see my grandchildren. I'm never going to see them if I don't do it now. Joe's appetite is gargantuan. Super skinny Emma's, however, is non-existent, which is why at seven stone ten, she's two stone and four pounds underweight. 20-year-old Emma Hughes gets over 25% of her limited calorie intake from squash. Filling up on this sugary liquid means there's no room for food, so it's not surprising that every day is a duvet day. I normally miss breakfast because it's sort of midday that I get out of bed, and then about 2 or 3 o'clock I'll have a, a two-hour nap, and then I'll be back in bed again at about 10 o'clock normally. So I'm asleep more than I'm actually awake. My energy levels are zero. And when she does get round to eating, certain rules need to be obeyed. I can never have wet and dry foods on the same plate. It either has to be separated by something or in a completely different bowl, because I hate the thought of wet food making dry food go soggy. Oh, I hate the thought of it. <laughs> I can't dunk biscuits at all, and even watching somebody else do it, it sort of sends the teeth on edge. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> Emma has another deep-seated habit. I'm scared of feeling full. I never finish a meal. There's always something left on my plate, even if I've got room for more. You're struggling. Ready. I find that very difficult to watch her eat such a small amount. She's always struggled. She's never eaten a full plate full, and I do worry. I really do worry about her sometimes. 
Emma's lack of proper meals is taking its toll. I'm very uncomfortable all the time. I can't sit in the bath for longer than 10 minutes because my spine sticks out so much. It just feels horrible. She is quite noticeably underweight. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned. I definitely want to change. But before Emma and Jo enter the feeding clinic to tackle their wayward relationships with food, Dr Christian's sending our supersizer stateside to meet a 33-stone woman whose life has been ravaged by obesity. I sleep with pain. It's like one big pain. And it's all due to fat. Oh, plain as day, F-A-T, fat. As she's gained weight, 58-year-old Diana Steed has lost her independence, and now she can't even breathe by herself. I hate it because I gotta drag this hose everywhere I go. It burns the inside of your nose. Who do I blame for the way I am now? I blame myself. Coming up, Joe learns a valuable lesson. I do it with my eyes closed, because someday the diabetes will take my eyes from me. She doesn't have much of life, does she? She doesn't have any life. And back in the UK, Emma and Joe check into the feeding clinic. Who do you live? Your iron intake is, is, is critically low. Essentially, you're infertile at the moment. start her healthier lifestyle, Dr. Christian has arranged for supersizer Jo Come in. to spend time with 33 stone Diana Steed in Ohio to try and show her just how bad things could get. You don't want to end up like this. It ain't no fun, honey. Pizza time! <laughs> the parallels are clear to see. Boy, don't that look good. <laughs> I would take my kids to a fast food place order them french fries, cheeseburger, or pizza, or something in this line that I didn't have to cook. Because believe me, as the years went on, I got lazy. Being fat makes you tired, miserable. The more fat I put on, the lazier I got. Hi, <coughs> love, <coughs> you. <coughs> now that I'm so big and my health is so bad, now I gotta depend on somebody and it's so hard. Diana has to rely on a carer to help her with the things that most of us take for granted. Do you have a shower every day? Um, depends. Some days I do and some days I don't. Some days she has breathing problems that she cannot get in the shower? Yeah. As well as breathing problems and diabetes, obesity brings with it some more unexpected side effects. I had a hysterectomy and my hormones were off. And I asked the doctor, and he said, the heavier you get, the more male comes out in you. I have a man's beard. I hate this. I do it with my eyes closed, because someday the diabetes will take my eyes from me. It was really shocking today seeing Diana take a shower. To think that my children might one day might have to do that for me was really scary. This is the hardest part of all. This is where yeah. she'll probably have to put her oxygen, oxygen back on. Yep, no problem. Okay. So this ain't no fun. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Done? I'm done. I've got too many ailments. So my days are over. Diana's health problems are endless, and today she has an appointment with one of the six doctors she's under. Uh, Diana, we got the x-ray of your left hip, and yeah. definitely it shows that you have a lot of arthritis in it. You probably know why, why you have a lot of arthritis, OK? Because two things, the weight, you're putting a lot of stress on these joints. I know. And you're not moving that much. As you know, Diana, it's a cycle that is going to keep getting worse. If the doctor told me what he told Diana today, I'd be devastated. Oh! <gasps> to think that I've got that much arthritis just because of my weight, and that I've got to live my life in that much pain. If we lose a little bit of weight, I can inject that joint, OK? OK. But you need to understand, OK, it is going to get worse, and you might end up with a hip replacement even for that. I know. OK? I don't want any of that. I no. don't. 
the fear is that she gains more weight, her pain gets worse, her diabetes, her blood sugar gets worse, and her lung condition gets worse. Her lifespan is going to be shorter, definitely. Dr. Christian has arrived in Ohio to check that the message is hitting home for Joe. Diana, unlike Jo, does have a huge list of health problems as a result of her weight, and all of these are actually avoidable if you keep your weight within a healthy range. I thank you for this food. Amen. Amen. Hello. How are you? This gentleman says he knows you. Hello. How are you? I thought I'd come and surprise you here. <laughs> thank you. In the middle of your lunch. Hi, how are you? Diana, Hi. I'm Christian. Hello, Hello Christian. Nice to meet you. Dr. Christian wants to see how much medication it takes to keep Diana ticking over. That is a lot of pills. How many? I'd say about 25 pills a day. Oh, wow, OK. That is not something we use very much in England. That's a really, really strong painkiller, oxycodone. What do you take that for? Oh, for my back. I have bulging disc disease. There's no surgery. I'm heavy, so therefore, all they can do is keep me comfortable. Someone in Dinah's situation with, with her size and her breathing problems is such a big anaesthetic risk and a surgical risk. So this is another painkiller. Diabetes, when you've got high blood sugars, the sugar can really damage the nerves, affect the nerves in your feet, and it's, it's very unpleasant, isn't oh, it? Oh, yes. I mean, we've then got some blood pressure tablets. Your cholesterol's up. This is what this pill's for, to try and keep that down. You've got drugs to try and thin your blood a little bit yeah. so you don't get clots and strokes yeah. and heart attacks. <sighs> what else? We've got pills for your acid. Do you get a bit of heartburn and acid reflux? Um, when you lay down, it comes up in your throat and it'll take your breath away. Yeah. Guess why you get that? Why? Because of weight. <sighs> I mean, not everything here is just because of her weight, mm -hmm. but I would say most of it is, and probably all of it is in some way made worse because of her weight. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I could have prevented this years ago. But no, I was too stubborn, I was young and dumb. Now look what it's got me. Just to get out with the fresh air and... Is that what you miss yeah. most in life? Is just getting outside? Yeah. Such a simple thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Dr. Christian's keen to hear what Joe thinks of Diana's situation. She doesn't have much of life, does she? She yeah. doesn't have any life. It's quite sad. How do you feel about being the weight that you are? Unhappy. Because um, I don't feel motivated anymore. I would suggest to you that your eating probably stems from emotional issues. I think you use food as comfort. Yeah. You're not eating it because you're hungry. And I also want you to have a little think about your mood and your state of mind at the moment, because I think you are a bit down, and I think your self-esteem is not great. And I want to boost that up for you. Because the trouble is, if you are a bit down, then you don't really care about doing stuff and changing stuff, you know? And I want you to. And I don't think you're happy with your weight, are you, at all? Yeah. You know that if you can lose the weight, you're going to be a whole load happier. It is going to require some hard work, but, hey, are you looking after three kids? I'll have three happy children at the end of it, though. I really hope meeting Diana has now given Jo the motivation that she needs, so that when she gets back to London and into my feeding clinic, she gives it 100%. I'd like to say a very big thank you, Diana, for inspiring me and motivating me to change my life. And thank you for listening. Goodbye and good luck, and I hope you feel better. Good luck to you. Back in the UK, it's time for our duo to check into the feeding clinic for a 48-hour mini-break full board. But this ain't no holiday. Dr Christian hopes that seeing each other struggle with their terrible diets will help Joe and Emma realise what's got them to this point. You're definitely not just a fussy eater. Your eating habits have clearly come from somewhere. This idea of control has stemmed from behaviours that you've sort of started up probably when you were a lot younger. And I really want you to have a think about what on earth these might be, because if we can start to work out what they are, then we can start to change them. I've always been really thin and really skinny. Um, never, ever had an appetite. I find it fearful being full. I can't really tell the difference between feeling full and feeling sick. If you carry on like this, you will carry on losing weight. And how long are you going to be able to keep that up for, do you think? 
Not very long at all. Not very long at all. Your diet is so restricted. I mean, iron, your iron t intake is, is, is critically low. It's terrible. And I suspect you're probably not really having periods anymore, are you? No. Not at all? No. The only way your body can any way maintain its iron levels is to stop down things like periods. That means essentially you're infertile at the moment. OK, if you start eating, these things will come back. Um, but it's a warning sign. When we were in America, we talked a little bit about sort of where these eating habits might have come from. Have you thought a bit about whether you sort of turned to food for comfort? I think I do. And I've got this obsession of overfilling my cupboards and fridge. Because it weren't there when I was younger. I tend to do it now. <laughs> I think I'm just scared the cupboards are going to run empty. But no, they're not going to. They're not going to, are they? No. For the next two days, Jo's going to have to get used to an empty cupboard as she takes on Emma's almost non-existent diet. It's breakfast. Thank God. There's some more. <laughs> Cereal, three slices of toast, chocolate and a cup of coffee. Versus nothing. What do you think? Uh, there's a lot of it. I love my breakfast. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I don't know where to start. I'm not going to have that bit. I'll have some toast, I think. <laughs> Is it just buttered toast? Yeah. I've got breakfast, lunch and dinner here, yeah. I think. <laughs> so, as long as you try. I normally wouldn't have cereal with milk. Would you not? Because I've got a bit of a problem with dry food going soggy and things like that, so... So you should have ate that first, really. <laughs> the toast is, like, a bit soggy as well. <laughs> I felt really bad for Jo. I felt a bit ashamed of myself. She sat there watching me eat my breakfast and she didn't have anything. I felt really bad for her. <laughs> You've pointed it hard. I'm almost at the soggy layer. I can see the milk. I can't eat any more of those. <laughs> it's better than nothing, I suppose. Oh, that's far too sweet this early. <laughs> I think I'm going to stop there, just so I don't get to that full feeling that I, I don't like. So I'm done. I'm not really eating a lot, have I? Not really. <laughs> it's a bit of a soggy start for Emma, who's only managed a quarter of a slice of toast and a spoonful of cereal. I think she could have tried a little bit harder. It weren't the best effort. Maybe lunch will give Emma something to really get her teeth into. Sorry. <laughs> a supersized ham sandwich, sausage roll and crisps, and for Joe, a packet of corn puffs and a lolly. Emma, that's ridiculous for lunch. <laughs> How rather you... big for a lot. <laughs> How do you live? Right. <laughs> <Enjoy>. <laughs> that gives me quite a lot of energy, actually, that drumstick. It can't be good for your teeth. <laughs> Are you going to try your sausage roll? Mm-hmm. I'm not a massive fan of sausage, if I'm honest. But Jo is, along with a whole array of other processed meat. In just one month, she gets through 22 sausages, 44 slices of ham, 13 rashers of bacon, 9 pork pies and 9 sausage rolls. Dr Christian wants to show her exactly what goes into all the processed meat she's eating and what damage it could be doing to her health. What sort of meat is it that they're using these things? Well. Not always the greatest meat, quite frankly. Things like pork belly, which I've got there, which is a really fatty meat. Can you see that? Yeah. Great, great, thick band of fat. No, it feels. <laughs> pork cheeks, pig's tail, and even trotters can all find their way into processed pork products. What I've got here is some molten lard. Now, this represents the fat content in all of these poor cuts of meat yeah. and all the pastry that it's wrapped in. And that is 203 teaspoons of fat that you're getting. Saturated fat is what puts your cholesterol levels up and it's what raises your risk of heart disease and stroke. And you are getting two and a half times the recommended amount. Jo's also getting two and a half times the recommended amount of salt in her diet. And nearly 30% of this comes from all the processed meat she eats. Your average pork pie, full of meat or not really? Probably not. Probably not. Well, look, I've got a packet that these have come from here. Meat content, pork pie, 21%. Because of this low meat content, sausages, sausage rolls and pork pies can be bulked out with rusk, and processed ham and bacon can be awash with added water. 
And a pork pie wouldn't be a pork pie without some boiled up skin and bone, also known as gelatin. Because you like sausages as well, the skin of the sausages is this stuff. And do you know what that's made of? This is cow collagen, essentially, sort of connective tissue. So you're getting a lot of bits of animals that you probably weren't expecting in your diet, weren't you? Yeah. One more ingredient that we haven't mentioned, and that is these have a long shelf life, and that's because there's preservatives. Sodium nitrite is probably the more commonly used preservative, so I'm going to bung some of that in. Sodium nitrite has raised various questions over the years because we know if it's used to preserve something like bacon and you're burning bits of it, we know that that burning combined with the sodium nitrite, combined with the acid in your stomach, can produce carcinogens and it will raise your risk of certain cancers. So it's not really ideal. Buy fresh meat and you're going to avoid the preservatives. With such huge quantities come serious health risks. Um, let's look at this one first. Lovely, clean, healthy intestine, nice pink colour, lots of blood supply. This, however, you can see there's a rather obvious problem there. You've got a growth, and that's a cancer. That's a bowel tumour. Anything above about 50 grams of processed meat a day will increase your risk of bowel cancer. You are having about 250 grams of processed meat a day. So as well as the salt and the fat putting up your risks of heart disease and stroke, yeah. the processed meat quantities are also increasing your risk of bowel cancer. It's quite scary to think that could be me. It's the end of the first day in the diet swap for takeaway queen Joe Palmer and meal dodger Emma Hughes. Oh, thank you. I'm really sorry. Goodness me. There you go. On the menu tonight, kebab and chips versus egg on toast and squash all round. <laughs> I feel sick just looking at it. So just try your best. Is that lamb? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, is it lamb and chicken? Yeah, it's mixed. Do you like chicken? I don't really eat chicken from a takeaway or anything cos I don't know, like, if it's been cooked right. I don't think Emma put any effort into it at all. She just instantly took a dislike into it and just pushed it round a plate. We're in this together and if I've got to try, then she's got to try. At least she's got something on her plate. <coughs> really enjoy egg on toast, but probably wasn't enough. Should have been a bit more, shouldn't there? <laughs> Seeing Emma struggle, Jo has started to realise just how off-kilter her portion sizes are. It's quite scary to think that I, I can chew that much. I don't think anybody would be able to finish one of those without feeling sick afterwards. Because we eat as a family, I'd, my boys would have something like that as well, so I feel quite ashamed that I actually feed my family that crap. Yeah. I probably wouldn't feed this to my dog. <laughs> No doggy bag tonight, then, even though Emma has nearly as much left as she started with. It's day two in the feeding clinic, and Jo and her rumbling tummy mean business. I don't feel Emma has tried, but um, this morning over breakfast, I'm going to really try and push her. If I can't help her, then I'll, I'll feel like a bit of a failure myself. Are you looking forward to breakfast this morning, Emma? No. That's going to be a difficult bowl of cereal, four slices of toast and coffee, then. I can hear milk. I have only just put the milk in that so you Aww. can eat it Thanks. now. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, but you've got nothing again. <laughs> it's OK. <laughs> Although you did really well yesterday, I don't think you tried as probably hard as we could try. I'm trying, but it is really hard. You're doing really well. It's hard from my point of view as well. Hard to watch you get upset. You're not fueling yourself up properly, are you, with food? No, oh, it's a good spoonful of the milk and cereal, not just the cereal. <laughs> Down the hatch. <laughs> it's getting really hard to chew now. Defeated by the cereal, Emma attempts half a slice of toast. I don't think I can eat much more. <laughs> I think you could try and finish that slice. Do you? I'm done. There is no way I can eat any more. <laughs> you have done really so well today. Of, I don't even think I can chew this last bit. <laughs> the diet swap is pushing Emma to her limits as she's having to face up to her complicated relationship with food. <sighs> I 
kom hier. Wat is er met een meid? This is really upsets me to hear you think that I'm not trying. <coughs> I can see you're trying. I just don't <laughs> think you're pushing yourself as far as you could. You did really well today. And I'm really proud of you. You should be proud of yourself, Emma. Yeah, but it's so hard. I feel really bad as well because you're sitting there with nothing. <laughs> but you're pushing me, boy. Not giving me anything. And if we can't stick together and do this together, then why are we here? <laughs> yeah. I hope. Yeah. When she said she was proud of me, that made me feel a lot better. And I am going to give it my best shot now. And obviously, I'm going to do it for her as much as anything. So. Dr Christian's concerned that Emma has issues around food that need to be resolved before she can make real changes to her diet. Emma, I just wanted to have a catch up with you about um, these whole issues of where your eating habits may have stemmed from. Have you thought a little bit more about it? Uh, yeah, I was thinking, obviously, when I was little, my parents were very strict with me. Finishing a meal was a big deal. If we didn't finish it, it was not a very good thing. Yeah, sure. So you think perhaps sort of subconsciously or slightly rebelling against all of that. Yeah, I suppose instead of being a, a naughty kid, I was the good girl, but I found something else to, to take control of, which was food. I think it's just become part of a habit now, and I need to leave the habit. Your behaviour is very much a, a sort of psychological pattern behaviour as a result of something. I think that almost certainly is the start of it, and now you've just got so used to running on empty, as it were. Mm -hmm. You know, your stomach has shrunk down, your metabolism has slowed right down, everything is adapted to deal with your tiny little calorie intake. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is something you're going to be able to change now that you've sussed that out? I think now I know that it's actually a reason it's in my head, then I think I'll definitely be able to move on and sort myself out. Emma's having to confront her own unhealthy relationship with food for the first time. For former anorexic Rosemary Marston, her issues with food took her to the brink. The real crash point in terms of the lowest weight was in 2001. Because it was such a drastically low weight, I would collapse, go into a coma. I started to lose my vision. My hearing went completely. Liver failed. You know, my heart has failed and I had to have dialysis because my kidneys failed. Eating disorders put a serious strain on the body. Every organ is at risk because all the tissues in the body need nourishment or they will fail. Other serious problems include collapse, fitting or death caused by low blood sugar or low salt. Rosemary spent 30 years of her life in a vicious circle of crisis, hospital treatment and relapse. I think the biggest problem for me was I had no concept at all that I was doing myself any harm. It just became a completely warped understanding of what I thought people wanted me to be. So if they saw me looking thinner last time, then they'd expect me to look even thinner this time. Janet Treasure is one of the UK's leading eating disorder specialists and treated Rosemary for a decade. Rosemary was very ambivalent about uh, help. One of the classical problems of anorexia was that these patients say, I don't suffer, therefore I'm not ill. Over the years, Rosemary's battle with anorexia intensified. Between 2004 and 2007, I was permanently in hospital. I would come out and within weeks be back in again. Food just never happened at all outside of hospital. Rosemary became very close to death. Her thinking was so unclear that she couldn't recognise that. And in order to safeguard her health, we had to use the Mental Health Act so she had no choice about whether to come into hospital or not. Rosemary's road to recovery began when she was assigned a specialist key worker. She said to me, I just want you to have a better life. And that's the one and only time where I heard somebody say that to me and actually processed it. And, and I thought, well, I've got nothing to lose. I could give it a go. It was a gradual process, but since that moment, Rosemary has turned her life around. There is definitely a key to recovery, and that's planning. It's not an option to miss food. It's not an option to make your life easy by resisting food. And I think the more things that you do of your own 
volition, the more hope you, you get. Her story is very important to hear that no matter how severe, how many times people need admission, how caught up they are in it, that they can make a good, good recovery. Now Rosemary is using her experience to help others through her work at a specialist eating disorder clinic, helping sufferers with the transition from hospital to home. Life has come full circle. I've served the longest apprenticeship in any professional capacity. If I can recover, anybody can. If you think that you or someone you know might be showing signs of an eating disorder, find out more at channel4.com slash supersize. It's lunchtime in the feeding clinic. Two cheese and onion sandwiches, half a pork pie, two packets of crisps and a cup of tea versus chilli con carne and six potato wedges. This is really nice. This is really horrible. But despite an unsure start, Emma tucks in for the first time. <laughs> really nice pork pie, I really like it. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> Being in the feeding clinic is giving Jo the time she never normally has to focus on how she deals with her weight. I don't tend to tell people how I feel, because um, I'm supposed to be the mom, so I don't really say a lot. I'll keep it all inside and then I'll go cry behind a closed door. Mm, that's quite sad. It is. But I, I try to be strong for my family, but mm. sometimes it's too much. The last time we went out, um, Somebody yelled abuse across the, the pub, um, shouting, let's pull a pig, aimed at oh, me, and so they went home early. I really, really knew you, because you're such a lovely person as well. <laughs> so it's really hard. Do you want a tissue? There you go. Thank you. <clears throat> quite hard to tell somebody that I've only just met. Mm. Things like that, and when I can't even tell my family. Well, you helped me when I was upset and I was crying, so I'm here for you as well. It's <laughs> much a joy for me. This is nice, though. <laughs> it's nice to have something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Dr Christian thinks that looking back might help Jo and Emma move forward. This one was probably when I was about 13. Probably the last family holiday we ever had before Mum and Dad um, got divorced. It was a good memory. But you can see I've got a bit of weight to me. Yeah. I do think that, like, when my dad left, that I probably started comfort eating a bit more than I did before. And this one, this was my wedding day. The day I got married, I hated my dress. I'd been in the shop for my fittings and I'd felt like a princess, like every girl wants to in their dress. And the day I put it on, I hated it. I didn't feel like a princess. I never felt comfortable in it. I felt fat. I didn't feel pretty. It was horrible. Loved the day, but I just hated the fact my dress didn't feel right. I was about seven or eight in this picture. This was sort of the, the very beginning of where my problem started, really. I wouldn't try different foods that my mum put on my plate. If I didn't know what it was and didn't know what it tasted like, I wouldn't try it. Yeah. Um, and also at this age, this is when children picked on me, started to pick on me at school and things like that, so... I bet that was really hard, being bullied. Uh, this one, um, it was about this age that I started to sort of limit my food. So it was like that's that age you, you started to be in control of what you, yeah. you ate? Yeah. This picture is of me and my boyfriend, Mitch. I absolutely love him to death. As long as I think we've got the support of our friends and partners and families, I think we'll crack it. Give me a hug. <laughs> it's the last supper of the diet swap. Only two hands. Thank you. Pizza, garlic bread, chips, chicken wings, onion rings and a glass of squash. Oh, my God. Versus a packet of crisps and a black tea. How can you live off a packet of crisps? How can you live off this? Just looking at it, like, looking at the size of it, is making me feel rather sick. Like, I'm not asking you to eat at all. I just want you to try a bit of everything. I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> Hair pack. <laughs> <laughs> this means business. 
you think you've learned enough to go back and change? Yeah, I'm definitely going to change my ways. I think I'm definitely going to start eating a lot more meat and probably sandwiches and things like that. How about you? I'm quite disgusted in myself that I could eat all of that in one sitting. It is hard to look at. I think I now know the difference between feeling full and feeling sick. I think we've both learned from our ways tonight, definitely. I think we've both learned from our ways, full stop. It's time for Dr Christian to hand over his rules for a healthier lifestyle. Right, here I have your diet plans. Jo needs to cut her calories from 3,757 a day to 2,500 and focus on preparing home-cooked meals rather than relying on takeaway and convenience food. She needs to shun the processed pork she was pigging out on in favour of lean meat, fish and chicken. Emma needs to up her calories from 800 to 2,000 by eating three meals a day and two iron-rich snacks, such as nuts, seeds and dried fruit. A fortified whole grain breakfast cereal will provide calcium, as well as slow-release carbs to help keep Emma's blood sugars stable. And for Jo, it's gone deeper than what's on her plate. I've come to the conclusion it's OK to share, it's OK to, to be emotional in front of people which is a big step for myself anyway. It's been a lot harder than I thought it would be. I'm glad that Jo was here, actually, because she, she encouraged me to eat more. Hopefully, I'll just remember her words when I'm at home, and that'll help. Oh, it's been lovely to meet you. Me too. I hope you get on all right. And you. Have a safe journey home. Yeah, I shall see you. See you. Bye. See you later. Coming up... After nine weeks of healthy eating, it's time for the final weigh-in. I'm a bit apprehensive about getting on the scales. I don't want to disappoint my friends, my family and myself more than anything. It's been nine weeks since Jo was told to take away the takeaway and Emma was advised to pick up her knife and fork. Time for Dr Christian to do the maths. I've got really mixed emotions at the minute. On one hand, I'm really, really excited. On the other hand, I don't want to disappoint my friends, my family and myself more than anything. Hello, hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Nice to see you again. You look very well. Thank you. You ate an awful lot of processed meat. Have you managed to cut down on these things? We don't eat pork pies, we don't eat sausage rolls. We buy loads more fresh meat. We still have takeaways, mm. but we have even once a month now as a treat. Excellent. Wow, that's really good news. And how are you feeling about yourself, your self-esteem and how you look? I'm getting a lot of compliments, which was really hard to get used to. Good. Because um, I wouldn't say I've never had them, but I do find it strange. But I hope you're enjoying that, no? I'm getting used to it now. Good. You better get used to it, because I think they're going to keep coming. I have the little ones come up and say, oh, you look more nice, Mummy, which is the biggest compliment of all. Yeah, of course it is. Good. I'm delighted, Joe. Well done. I'm a bit apprehensive about getting on the scales, but I've got my fingers crossed that everything goes well for me. You're looking amazing. Thank you. I nearly didn't recognise you, actually. <laughs> Tell me what's changed for you. I'm eating a lot better now. My mood's changed completely. I'm a happier person. I don't sleep as much. Wow. And what sort of foods are you eating now? Um, I'm eating a lot of dairy foods now, uh, things like cheese, yogurts. I have milk in my tea, which I never used to have before. Lots of different meats, and my energy levels are just soared through the roof. I feel so energised. So do you think these changes are for keeps, for good now? I hope so. You look a lot better in your face as well. Thank you. And you look really well. You've got a skirt on for a start. <laughs> no, I've never seen dead in a skirt before. I'm going to butt into this one and um, put you out of your miseries now and tell you your weights, because that's the bit you really want to know, isn't it? But you both look fantastic, that's the first thing to say. And I'm going to start with you, Emma. Weight-wise, modest, I'll be honest with you. You've put on three pounds, but you've put on two inches around your middle, which is a significant amount, and I think really well done. You know, it... It isn't all about weight gain with you. It was about actually trying to fix all the issues that are up here, and I think you've made a really cracking start with that, so I'm pleased. Are you happy? Yes, very. I'm yes. really proud of her. Right, Joe, and you. One stone, five pounds, OK? Which, to me, is excellent. Yeah. I said about two pounds a week yeah. I wanted you to lose, so you have actually done exactly that. But more fantastically, 
You've lost eight inches around your tummy. It's brilliant. And your family are noticing, you're noticing. You look so much healthier. Mm -hmm. You look like healthy, happy people, and that is only going to improve. I'm really proud of you. Well done. Thank you. When Dr Christian said that I'd put on two inches around my waist, I was really excited, and I can actually feel the difference. That's just the start for me. I'm going to hopefully put on a lot, lot more. When I get home, I think my husband and kids are going to be really proud of me. I'm amazed at eight inches, which is really good, because now my jeans fit again. <laughs> I'm just taking it one dress size at a time. Definitely enough there. Next week, supersized Chris swaps diets with super skinny Nathan. He made out like he had two stomachs. I think he's a cow. He's got, like, one stomach for savoury, one stomach for sweet. And we hear how eating disorders can lead to a seriously distorted view of the body. There are times when I look in the mirror and all I see is flab and rolls and curves. And Dr Christian's back in the US, where food addiction has led to an obesity crisis. For me, cheesecake was like crack cocaine. One man, many voices, now spread over two countries back for a brand new series, Catch the Face Jacker, at 10 o'clock. Next, it's all about the little things, the sense of occasion, having the family around you, accessorising your electronic tag so it looks all pretty, big fat gypsy weddings. Coming up.